wrong one. Bless you this um, Pentecost Sunday. 
We have a, a similarity between today and 2,000 years ago. 2,000 years ago, they were huddled in an upper room together. Today, we're all huddled in our own homes. <laughs> um, 2,000 years ago, they were uh, afraid that uh, somebody was going to kill them. Today, we're <coughs> worried about a virus <coughs> wanting to kill us. Um, I was thinking about this on, on, on Wednesday, and the Lord just started to drop things into my spirit. And he dropped in Zephaniah 3.17. It says, the Lord your God in the midst of you is mighty. He's in the midst of you. <laughs> He's in the midst of you. He's in the midst of us. It says, He joys over you with singing. It's a great verse. He joys over us. He sings over us. Hebrews 3.15 says, let us, let us offer the sacrifice of praise. That means that we've got to sing. It calls it the, the fruit of our lips. Sing this morning. Sing this morning as you're, you're, you're in your home. Maybe you're afraid. Maybe you're not afraid. Maybe you feel bold. Excellent. Stand this morning. Get up. Get off that couch. Get off that chair. <laughs> And, and, and sing. Stan's going to uh, lead us in worship. Stan and Margaret are going to lead us in worship. Get up and sing. Yeah, right on. Why? Yeah. Because it's the sacrifice of praise. Yeah. That's what he's looking for. That's what your heavenly father is looking for. Yes. The last yeah. verse he gave me was um, Psalm 22, verse 3. It says, God inhabits the praises of his people. So as you stand this morning and as you Lift your voice and you give him the fruit of your lips. He comes in in his spirit. And he's right there. Yeah. <laughs> he's right there. Yes. Worship him. Yes. Lift your hands in your quiet room. Do a dance that nobody else is going to see. <laughs> what, whatever. Worship him this morning. Yeah. Good. He loves you. That's why he joys over you with singing. It's nothing that you have done. It's nothing that we have done. It's his love because he loves us. Yeah. So, <coughs> good morning. Welcome to church. Go ahead, Stan. Thanks, Stan. Good words of encouragement for us to enter in wherever we're at this morning. And yeah, I was feeling a little discouraged the other day in the sense that today is Pentecost Sunday, and I love Pentecost Sunday. I love being together with people on Pentecost Sunday, and we can't be together this Pentecost Sunday. So the Lord reminded me, you know, they, in, if you read through the book Acts, and I know Dan told me that after we finished the Gospels in 90 days, he started reading Acts. And, you know, the Lord reminded me that in the book of Acts, uh, Cornelius got his Pentecost in his home. And uh, then I was reminded that uh, Peter was visited by the Spirit of the Lord when he was on his patio deck at a home in Acts chapter 10. And then I was reminded also that Saul, when he was blind, went to a home after he had had a visitation of the Lord on the Damascus Road and there Ananias came and laid hands on him, and he experienced the healing by the Holy Spirit in a home. So you're in a home, and I really appreciated what Dan said to you today, and I agree with that. So as we worship the Lord today, you are in a home, and you are in good company with Cornelius and Peter and Saul. The Spirit of the Lord will touch you and respond to you and meet you right now as we worship the Lord. So I've chosen some songs that talk about the Spirit of the Lord in our lives. And may the thirst of the Spirit be awakened in your heart and you respond to that. To the river I am going bringing sins I cannot bear 
come and cleanse me come forgive me Lord I need to meet you there in these waters healing mercy flows with freedom from despair I am going to that river Lord I need to meet you there precious Jesus I am ready to surrender every care take my hand now lead me closer Lord I need to meet you Precious Jesus, I am ready to surrender every care. Take my hand now, lead me closer. Lord, I need to meet you there. Come and join us in the river. Come find life beyond compare. He is calling. He is waiting. Jesus longs to meet you there. He is calling. He is waiting, Jesus longs to meet you there. Precious Jesus, I am ready to surrender every care. Take my hand now, lead me close. Lord, I need to meet you there. Take my hand now, lead me closer. Lord, I need to meet you there. Yes, Lord Jesus, praise your mighty name. Yes, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Lord Jesus, Lord. And so wherever we're at right now in our home, mm, we receive we receive your presence in our lives. We, we awaken ourselves to the reality that your presence is right there. Your presence is with us right now. And whatever our need is, your presence is with. The river is here. The river is here. You're calling me to lay aside the worries of my day To quiet down my busy mind and find a hiding place Worthy You are worthy I open up my heart and let my spirit worship yours I open up my mouth and let a song of praise come forth oh worthy you are worthy you are worthy Wow. 
worthy. Of a childlike faith, of my honest praise, of my unashamed love, of a holy life, of my sacrifice, of my unashamed love, you are worthy, worthy, you are worthy, you are worthy, Lord, worthy, you are worthy. Calling me, you're calling me to lay aside the worries of my day. Buy it down my busy mind and find a hiding place. Sing it out. Worthy. You are worthy. Worthy. Open up my heart and let my spirit worship yours. I open up my mouth and let a song of praise come forth. Oh, worthy. Worthy. You are worthy, Lord. Worthy. Of a childlike faith, of my honest praise, of my unashamed love, a holy life, of my sacrifice, of my unashamed love. You are worthy, Lord, worthy, you're worthy, worthy, Lord, you're worthy, Lord, worthy, you are worthy, Lord, you are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, you are worthy, you are worthy, you are worthy, oh worthy, you are worthy, worthy. Come close, no thing can compare. You're our living hope, your presence. Oh, yes, I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of love. When my heart becomes free and my shame is undone in your presence, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. 
come here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Your presence. Your presence is Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Yes, you are, Lord. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere your glory god is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence lord holy spirit you are welcome here come flood this place and fill the atmosphere your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, in Jesus, on the last and greatest day of the feast, in John chapter 7, He said, You know, all that are thirsty, come to Me and drink. And He says, Out of your innermost being will flow rivers of living water. And so Jesus just said, Hey, are you thirsty? Just come to Me. Just come to Me. It's not just a feeling. You know that. It's not an emotion. You know that. It's an act of faith. It is a stepping out as an act of will of just saying, Holy Spirit, I need you, Lord Jesus. I want to send you. I need you in my life. Let him fill you. Let him refill you with the Spirit of God. All who are thirsty, all who are weak, come to the fountain. Dip your heart in the streams of life. Let the pain and the sorrow, yes, let it be washed. Be washed away in the ways of His mercy. As He cries out to deep, we sing, come, Lord Jesus. thirsty 
All who are thirsty. Ah, sing it out. And the sorrow be washed away in the waves of his mercy as he cries out to thee. We sing, Come, Lord Jesus, come. Stan, Margaret, and you. I have with me here some um, announcements. It says announcements for Dan. They're not just for Dan. It's for Dan to read. <clears throat> the church work be June 12th. This means you. Um, I don't think I'll be here. I don't think I'll be here. Just we're, it's it's our anniversary on the fourteenth, and we're going to go away for a week. Um, projects are stair railings on uh, the front entrance. That's over there, and uh, stairs for emergency exit. It's over there. That one over there, and uh, sealing the trim on the elevator. Um, and Matthew Barron is going to have a barbecue lunch for the work bee. He does that so well. <laughs> he does. <laughs> Mew is excited, yes. Um, repairing uh, exterior ground drainage. So the, the drainage in front of the building on Catala Street um, on the fire hall side of the church, okay? Um, uh, they're going to dig that up and probably dig down to where the drain tile is and put in new stuff so it's better, so it doesn't leak into your church building. Um, I don't know if you noticed this, but in my house we've noticed this. There's plants there. Those plants are going to get dug up. It says uh, anyone 
um, who would like one of those plants, help yourself. Do they have to come and dig it up, or are they you you got to come and dig it up? Is there not going to be an excavator here eventually? Okay, well you gotta you gotta come and you gotta get it yourself, and you don't have to pay anything, but donations would be appreciated because we're talking about mature, quality number one plants. What? We're just asking for a donation. Nothing wrong with that. You know, um, I, I, I'm jesting, but um, yeah, they are they are mature plants and. Um, they do need to be dug up. Bless you. Uh, if you're wondering about, um, I, 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 um, I talked about donations. If you're wondering about your tithes and offerings, you can come to the church and do it at the machine like I do, because I'm old. <laughs> or you can do it online through PayPal. That's correct, Stan? That's right. That's correct. Okay. Or the third way is... What do they call that? They call e -transfer. that an e-transfer. Yeah. yeah, you see, I, I'm not techy enough. I don't, I don't, if I got to e-transfer something, my, my lovely wife, who loves me and takes care of me, will do that for me. Um, but I, I don't have to do that very often. Um, but those are the three ways you can, you can bring a tithe or an offering um, to the, the house of the Lord here. Um, so Stan is going to be ministering in the Word today. Um, brother, are you, are you ready? Sure. I'll just grab my... Perfect. All set. Okay, he's ready. You know, in a, in a, in a, a month or two or five, I might be able to lay my hands <laughs> on you and pray over you. But I am good. going to pray over you anyways. No hand laying. There should be good, no hand you. laying going on whatsoever. Um, Father, thank you for Stan. Um, thank you for uh, what you did in his heart all those years ago when you saved his soul. Thank you for that. And Father, as he brings forth the word, I pray that you would anoint each of us that are going to listen. Help us to hear. Help us to obey your word. And help us to be uh, enriched through it. Thank you, Father. Bless Stan, I pray. In Jesus' name, I ask and seal this prayer. Amen. 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 Thank you, Dan, so much for being our service leader today and for sharing all those thoughts with all of us today. We greatly, greatly appreciate that. And so it is my joy today. It is Pentecost Sunday, and so I'm going to talk about that. And uh, my first scripture verse is going to be in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verse 48 to 49. And so that's what we're going to read in a minute once you all get a chance to kind of find it, so maybe if you've got a Bible in front of you or you use it on your cell phone, a device, whatever it is, uh, I'd appreciate it if you just kind of, you know, scroll through and find it. And uh, however that works for you with uh, your iPad or your cell phone or whatever you're using, your, your, your Bible. I actually have a real, well, I, should, I guess they're all real Bible. But I mean, I got a, I got a Bible Bible here. I, the, anyway. Just kind of the way I'm wired. I've had this since 19... When did I get this one? 91 or something. This one. 94. But uh, it's not my first Bible, but it's, uh, I like this one. It's sharp. I, I, I kind of know where stuff is in it. Pentecost is something that means a lot to me, as to many of us. And I, I had an experience with the Spirit of the Lord and Pentecost here in Port McNeil, uh, at uh, the beginning of my journey, uh, the lights came on, I, my relationship with Jesus Christ came into focus, and he became my, my savior, I asked him into my life, and you can do that today if, if, if you never have, it, it's very simple, you just say, Jesus, I want you in my life, I want you to be my savior, I, uh, I ask you to give me eternal life, uh, I realize I can't earn it. I, I can't make that happen. I just receive you as my gift, as your gift to me. And, and, and he'll do that. But you know, I, I, I also uh, received Pentecost while I was in this church. I was actually down at Cowich and Camp on the island and back here. But there were so many experiences I've had with sensing the Holy Spirit over the years. I am a Port McNeil guy. 
I mean, I, you know, I've lived other places, but so much of my spiritual journey has, has, has been here. I go down the streets and I, I remember things. You know, I, I go down McNeil Road. You know McNeil Road? A lot of people don't even think of the street names anymore. You know, you just kind of know what's there. But I, go, I remember going down McNeil Road, walking on the, on the road and searching my heart and asking the Lord if he was real. I can, I, I can, I drive down that road sometimes, Dan, and I, in my Jeep, and I go down and I look at the sidewalk and I, and I remember that conversation I had with the Lord as I walked, are you real? My mom went to that full gospel church and she told me how real you are and I know you're up there, but that you're real and, and, and you want to touch my life and you want to be my, my savior, not just everybody's, but mine. And I remember that conversation, and at that point, I decided that I would go to, uh, to our church. And uh, I went there, and I gave my heart to the Lord, you know. So I have all these experiences. And so Pentecost is something that, that means so much to me and has made such a profound difference in my life. So I just want to talk to you about that today, because it's Pentecost Sunday because I sense I should and, and, and that I would like to. And it's not just because I should, but I really want to. And, uh, and so in Luke chapter 24, and in the 40, 40, 48th and 49th verse. Now, now what I've said so far, if you're timing me, don't time me. But if you're timing me, that was just story time. That wasn't the sermon, right? That's just story time. So that doesn't count. <laughs> so Luke 24 verse 48 says this. You are witnesses of these things. This is Jesus speaking, Luke 24, 48. You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high, with power from heaven. Now, the whole story here, the context, as we call it, is Jesus is speaking, and he had just breathed on his disciples and he had, to receive the Holy Spirit, and so they, they had received the Holy Spirit into their lives. Jesus went on and said to, to them, he said, listen, he said, now I, I, I'm calling you to be my witnesses. He said, to share what is happened, what was happening now is been spoken of throughout the whole Bible, and now we see the reality of it. Jesus is saying, I died on the cross. I, you see me in front of you. I have been risen from the grave. Forgiveness of sins is now available, just like I said it, I experienced many years ago. It is still here for us. We can respond and receive forgiveness of sins. And then he goes on and he says, for everyone, everyone, and he said, and listen, and he said, and he said, everyone needs to hear this message. That's what Jesus said. That's what it says in those verses before what I read. And then Jesus goes on and he says, so I want you to wait for this gift from the Father. Well, I'll come back to that, but today is Pentecost Sunday. The church celebrates this, not just our church, but the church, the universal church around the whole globe and the world, celebrates this day, Pentecost Sunday. It's Pentecost Sunday is always the seventh Sunday after resurrection, after Easter Sunday, seventh Sunday. And so it is a celebration and a remembrance that the Holy Spirit encountered the church encountered the people of God and he empowered them and that reality of him, how wonderful is that, was given by the gift of God on Pentecost, Acts chapter 2, in the first few verses as we kind of go through that. But you know, it is also something we celebrate because I celebrate, I, I, I'm not interested in just celebrating because of history. You know, I, I like history. In fact, I do like history. But, but, but we don't, you know, I'm not preaching today because of something history. I'm preaching about something today that is up to date as tomorrow's newspaper. It, it, it is something we can encounter again today. It is a current reality and a current experience. 
whether we're in this building at this moment where I'm standing in front of you or whether you're in your home right now, the Spirit of God is there with you and He desires that you experience this beautiful gift from the Father of the Holy Spirit. Isn't that wonderful? You know, this is not some kind of side stream Christianity thing. This isn't some sort of extremism kind of movement. This isn't just something that there's the odd person that still believes it, you know, like they used to believe it. This is something real today. Do you know there are over a half a billion, 500 million plus people that, that are Pentecostal, charismatic by experience? It is not limited to any one church. It is not limited to any one denomination. People from all kinds of denominations have experienced Pentecost, have experienced the baptism. Did you know that one in four Christians, I'm talking around the world, one in four Christians have had an experience of Pentecost in their lives. That's what the statistics tell us. Isn't that amazing? So this is no side stream stuff. This is mainstream. This is what Jesus called us to. And when he said we can experience, I think that's exciting. Now, when we talk about Pentecost, the hail marks, the focal points of that are uh, marked by a belief in the baptism of the Spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. It is marked by this as an understanding that is an experience that is separate and distinct from salvation, right? And so that's what we're talking about here this morning. And I'm just so excited about it because I have experienced this. And, and it's something that I can continue to experience in my daily life. I mean, I was singing the songs and I was soaking and I was just saying, yes, Lord, I'm thirsty, Weren't you? Lord, I want more. Do it again in my life. I want more of you in my life. I want to experience you. I need your life in me. And so the first thing Jesus said when it related to Pentecost, the first thing we find here that he said was this. Jesus said, wait for it. Luke 24, verse 49. He said, wait in the city of Jerusalem at that time, until you receive this gift. The Father's about to bring that to you. Wait for it. He says, he says, I want this message to go around the world, around your world, but around the world. But first, wait. Wait until the gift is, comes to you. Isn't that interesting? And then in Acts chapter 1, and in the fourth verse, he says it again. Now, now, Luke wrote the Gospel of Luke, and then right after that, he went in and, he, and, and we find he wrote Acts as well. And in Acts, he repeats it again in Acts chapter 1, verse 4, when he says, wait for the gift my Father promised. Isn't that something? So Jesus said to us, now we're, we're talking mainstream stuff here, guys. This is mainstream as you can get. G we're talking Jesus. We're talking Jesus' words. And Jesus said, wait, wait. And so why did he say, what's that all about? What does he mean? Jesus is saying, one thing Jesus is saying is this is a priority in your life. This is to be a priority in your life. He says, people need to hear the message, but this is a priority in your life. Why? Because it's for all nations. You are to be my instruments. You are to be my witnesses. That says that in verse 47 and 48. For all nations, be my witnesses. And so he said you need more of the Holy Spirit in your life. You do. You need more of the Spirit uh, in your life in order to be used of him. And so the Holy Spirit came and gave them power. How amazing is that? It says... So, so the first thing Jesus said about Pentecost was, wait for it. The second thing Jesus said about Pentecost is that it will bring you power. Now, I'm just using the words as he said them before us. And as something is repeated here. He says, he will bring you power. Power 
is foremost the evidence of Pentecost. Power. You shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you, right? Acts chapter 1, verse 8. That's what it says, right? Right there. And uh, we find it as well in, in this place over here. So, so that's what Jesus said, right? And so we're reading Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But you will receive power and the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Well, listen, that's what the Scripture says. Now, Peter, the apostle, who hung out with Jesus for over three years and was very close to Jesus, he received, when Jesus breathed on him in Luke chapter 24, and in, and in the Gospels we note that, he breathed on him, he came in the upper room and he breathed on them, and he re they received the Holy Spirit. But he had not yet experienced Pentecost. Right? Isn't that right? And then later on, there was, he had another experience with the Lord, and that's in Acts chapter 2, as Jesus said. And he was filled. There was this, 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 this ministry of the Spirit, this gift of, of this wonderful power that was given to Peter and to anyone else who would receive it at that moment. And Peter experienced that. And so I am so thankful that the Spirit of the Lord had these things recorded so that we could see what that was like. So we said, well, what's that mean? What's that look like? Well, look at the life of Peter, and you'll see what that means and see what that looks like. And so Peter, it says in Acts chapter 2, Peter experienced Pentecost. Now, what did that look like? Well, one of the things in Peter's life, now I'm not going to get into all the details, but I'm going to tell you a couple things this morning. And he says, there was an absence of fear. An absence of fear. It says in Acts chapter 2 and verse 14, after the Holy Spirit had fallen, after this was noised abroad. Acts chapter 2, verse 14, it says, Then Peter stood up with the eleven, and he raised his voice, and he addressed the crowd. And he gives this amazing message. Acts chapter 2, verse 14. You've got to read it if you haven't read it for a while. It's an amazing message that Peter gave. There was, but, but not just did he give a message, but as I'm thinking about it again this morning, you know, when, when he spoke, there was a, a confidence as he spoke. There was a strength to him within his inner man and spirit as he spoke. There was a conviction as he spoke. There was an ability to articulate. There was, there was an absence of fear. Now, when I say absence of fear, let, let's get this right. Absence of fear doesn't mean we're uncomfortable. Absence of fear means we don't feel afraid or something like that. It means the courage to move beyond that, right? Sometimes our emotions don't line up with that. But the Holy Spirit will give us the courage to move beyond that. And that's what happened with Peter. And he got up there. There's thousands. I mean, there's thousands of people, right? 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 And so, you know, you get on, people get tongue-tied when they're standing in front of 15 people, 20 people, 30 people. Some people, you know, they're comfortable up to 50 people. Some people are comfortable speaking and maybe a couple of hundred people. But that day, Peter stands up to people that knew absolute nothing about the gospel, and there was over 3,000 of them that responded that day. There was this, this inner strength unleashed by the Holy Spirit that helped him, right? That's what we're talking about here. That was the power that was released in his life. It enabled him to confront. It enabled him to encourage. It enabled him to bring a response to thousands of people. The other thing that Peter experienced that day is to put it another way, is the power, the power of God. Now, Peter discovered the power of Pentecost in three different ways. Three ways that I would relate to you today. One, God gave him the words to say. Isn't that something? And, and sometimes it's like that, you know. Sometimes, see, like, like I have a message this morning, and I had an opportunity to prepare. I spend, usually when I prepare a sermon, it takes me a couple of days, you know, you know, I'm praying about it often before that, but, you know, I, I take a couple of days and I'm praying and I'm studying and I'm writing and, you know, all of that. It takes, a, it takes quite a bit of work, you know, study to get a message. But you see, in, in Peter's case, it, God didn't say to him, Peter, 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 listen to me. He said, now get into your study, you know, or... Take a couple of days off work from fishing and lock yourself away and get your notebook out and start writing because you're going to have to come up with a polished message 
on Sunday morning or, you know, or whatever, right? In, or you're going to get this opportunity in front of thousands of people. It wasn't like that. It wasn't like that. All of a sudden, an opportunity presented himself, and he got up, and he just started saying, hey, you guys, you see what's happening today? You see that? Let me tell you what's going on here. This, this is 9 o'clock in the morning. Some of you are saying that people are drunk. You know, they're, they're, they're moving around and doing stuff that, you know, they're all full of joy, and it's only 9 in the morning. They haven't had their first cup of coffee yet or anything, and they, they, they must be drunk. And Peter say, no, 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 no. And he gives this amazing message. What happened? God gave him the words to say. And he was willing to step out and just start. He felt the Holy Spirit. He just started and God gave him the words to say. Isn't that amazing? God gave him the words to say. Second thing is he discovered power in the sense of, and so, so when God gives you words to say that impact, that's powerful. But, but also the second thing is it impacted people. It touched people. Over 3,000 people responded in a positive way. Isn't that right? Power to speak, power that people responded to, power also manifested with a boldness to step outside beyond his fears. Now, there's other things in Pentecost uh, that I could say, but I only got one message this morning, and I only really have time to focus on a certain piece. You say, well, you could have said this, you could have said that. Well, I know that. But this is what I feel to share with you this morning. Now, isn't that exciting? So he, he received the power of the Lord. The Spirit gave him the power to share his life experience of what God was doing in his life and what Jesus had done for him. To tell the story of how Jesus was real in him. That's what happened on that day. And so that's what he did. You shall receive, Peter, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. So the Holy Spirit came, right? Nothing to be afraid of or whatever. This is mainstream stuff. This is Jesus Christ stuff. This is, this is a half a billion people talking, right, in our world today. This is for us now. It really, really is, right? And so, and so, the, so, so the Lord brought him power to share his life. And, and how, tell, tell us more about that power, Stan. Okay, I'm glad to. So, 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 so the power, what else is that? that the power in, 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 the, in this experience that we're talking about will bring you further illumination. Illumination. See, look, look at this. Acts 2, the 37th verse. Acts chapter 2 and the 37th verse. So look that up. Acts 2.37. Write, write it down. Whatever. Here it is. Acts 2.37. It says, When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart, and they said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? So, so picture this whole story. So Peter gets up. He shares his story. And there are thousands of people there listening. And the response was amazing. It says that people were cut to the heart. That means they were, they were impacted. They were convicted. They were, they, were, they were challenged by the Holy Spirit. What was going on? There was, there was, there was this, this presence of God. The presence of the Holy Spirit that was upon uh, Peter as he spoke. We, we use the word anointing is the word we use, Right? Uh, that there's the presence of the Lord upon him that wasn't just what he said, but the Spirit of God was witnessing to that, and it touched people's hearts to the point of saying, well, we got to respond to this. How do, how, do we, how do I respond to this? I want to respond. I'm, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling God here. I, I don't quite understand who he is, but, but he's touching me in some way here. How, what do I do with this? And that's what it's saying. What do we do? What's going on? The Spirit of the Lord was drawing people. And that is one of the signs, again, of Pentecost, is that it brings more strength to our witness that causes more of a response and more of the Holy Spirit within that conversations and those connections, etc. Let me go on to say this. Power, when we talk about the word power, the word power has a bad name. But in the biblical sense, it is a very positive Powerful, it's powerful, there's that word powerful again. It's a very positive, impacting, life-giving word. Here, when the Lord talks about that and he says you will receive power, what's he saying? He's, he's not talking about domination. 
I felt to say that this morning. When it talks about power, it is not the power to, to, to bulldoze person. It is not a power to dominate someone else. It is not a force in that sense. What this power is, now get this, it is the power of releasing revelation. It is the power of enlightenment. It is a power for people to understand. And so Peter's speaking. Those guys hadn't experienced yet. They hadn't experienced what Peter was saying. But as he spoke, they are, the lights are coming on. There was a power released for him to explain in a way that by the anointing of God, they could get it. They could understand it and, and want it in their life. Now, guys, that's power. The power to help people get it, right? And they got it to the point they want to respond. Now, you, you know, in our, I was thinking about this, and I Googled it the other day and, and, and looked up something because... We talk about education in our culture and in our society, in our world. We talk about education. And people say that education is power. You ever heard that? Education is power. I, I've heard that lots. So I, I, I looked that up. And, and, and that led me to Nelson Mandela. And Nelson Mandela really believes strongly in education. And one of the things he said was this. I, I love this quote, so I wrote it down for you. Nelson Mandela from South Africa, he, he said this, education is the most powerful weapon we can use to change the world. That's Nelson Mandela. Education is the most powerful weapon we can use to change the world. That's a pretty good statement. I like that. But what I want to talk to you about now is spiritual education. Spiritual education. Because what was happening is P Peter was dispelling Knowledge, knowledge of God, knowledge of the kingdom of heaven, knowledge of the Holy Spirit, knowledge of how to come to the Lord. And friends, that is the most powerful weapon to change the world. It really, really is. Nelson Mandela was talking about the physical world, but I'm talking about the spiritual world. And so power is of the, of, of the Pentecost is the ability to help people get it. It is the ability to be able to share in that sense that people get it. That's what happened to Peter on that morning, right? On that day. The power was given to him to share his life and his life story and the reality of who Jesus was, right? I think that's pretty awesome. Only the Holy Spirit can bring Spirit life can bring the kingdom of heaven. It says in John 6, verse 63, the Spirit gives life, the flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you, they are full of spirit and life. Right? That's what Jesus said. Now, Jesus died, rose again, and, and he ascended to heaven. And so now Peter is speaking on that first Pentecost Sunday and we are finding that the Spirit of the Lord is now in Peter and Peter is able to speak words of life. They are full of the Spirit and they are full of the life and people are getting it. Power is the ability to unlock and release what God wants people to know. The good news. The good news. What Jesus did. What he's done. What he has for us, right? Even Peter stepped into more illumination. More knowledge, more revelation was given to him. It says in Acts chapter 2 and verse 16, here's Peter and he's preaching, he's speaking away, he's telling his story, he's sharing the other 11 around him, all these other people that were in the upper room with him, and there he is, and, and he says to the people, hey, guess, you know what? This is that. This, this, this is what Joel was saying. You know, you know guys, we, we get up on Sundays. We go, oh, no, Sunday. It wasn't Sunday. Saturdays. We get up on the Sabbath and we go to the synagogue and we, and we, and we hear the rabbis you know, sharing, the, sharing the scriptures from the Old Testament. And, and, and I've heard that 
that I've heard Joel, I've heard us read Joel before. And Joel chapter 2, you know, talks and uh, talks about about this. And 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 I can't believe it. I didn't get it. Now I get it. Joel in Joel chapter 2 was talking about this and and he quotes a major section of several verses of what Joel said. What happened? The lights had come on, you see. He was able to see folks Power is the ability to understand and to be released into that revelation and, 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 and receive the truth of what that is saying. He sent his word, he said he healed them, he delivered them from all their destruction. That, that is the lights coming on, right? And so that day the lights came on. But it wasn't an isolated experience. We find it right through Acts and in the New Testament as Paul speaks and so forth. We find it down through history. We find it again today. I, I told you that I have experienced him many times in this way. Right? I had a I, I received Pentecost and, and, and now I continue to, to 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 find him in my life and the Spirit of God moving through me. And that's a wonderful thing. And you can too, wherever you're at. So 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 the early church modeled this. If you go to Acts chapter four, verse thirty one, it says this in Acts chapter four, thirty one. In its opposition, and the church was in opposition. And uh, I was talking to our brother Dan uh, uh, the other day, and well, I wasn't talking, we were texting. I guess that's a form of talking. But anyway, we were texting, and I was talking about being service leading and, uh, on Sunday, and he already knew, of course, I was reminding him, but he already knew. And, and I was saying, well, it's Pentecost Sunday. And, and then he got back to me, and he says, you know, I says, you know, one of the differences, one of the things that's distinctive about the early church is, is, is they, were, they received persecution. And in response to that persecution, they saw their need of the Lord. Something like that, Dan said, anyway. Right, Dan? Something like that. And, and, and so there is something to that when we have opposition. Well, in Acts chapter 4, this is the early church model. Peter and John are, are pulled up in front of the Sanhedrin. That's all the top dog religious leaders of the culture and the religion of the day. And they had a lot of power in the sense of, uh, of an ability to make your life very, very difficult. And uh, they tried to intimidate them. They tried to intimidate them not to talk about Jesus anymore. So they came back to the church, and, and, and they, felt, they felt that. They felt that intimidation, and they felt that, you know, trying to make them become fearful and, and to become insular. And so they went to the church and expressed what they had gone through. And so, you know what the church did? Well, let's pray for more power. Let's pray for boldness. Let's pray for more of the Holy Spirit. Right? You could do that. And so that's what they did. And so in Acts chapter 4, verse 31, after they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. Isn't that right? So... Power was marked by boldness and by courage. Peter found himself in a situation where he needed more, where his courage had been delete, depleted. Well, he needed more. And so in our lives as Christians, even as people that have received Pentecost, have received the filling of the Holy Spirit, we need to recognize that we are, we are leaky vessels. We need to continually be refilled, right? And so he's Peter, he's going to his world, he's trying to touch people for Jesus Christ, and some people respond to you, but some people don't. Right? And so what can happen is you can begin to feel depleted. And so what he did, he went back to church, and he just said, I need more. And the Lord refilled him, right? That's what happened there. Now, so, and then that led to the fruits of Pentecost. Now let's talk a little bit about the fruits of Pentecost. And what we're saying is, this isn't just for Peter. I hope you're getting this. This is for you, right? So you can feel depleted at times. Maybe you feel depleted today. Well, there's more. There's more of the Holy Spirit for you right now. You can receive more of the Spirit. You can receive a refilling of the Holy Ghost. Yes, you can. You really can. Peter did, and so can you in your life, right? The fruits of Pentecost. In Acts chapter 1, verse 8, it says, You shall receive power. That word power can also be translated as ability. 
ability. In other words, it's like a key. It's a key. Now, I know now it's a day and age is different. We got our fobs and all. We can keep them in our pocket. And we can just push the button and we can open up our doors. Uh, I don't got one like that. I don't got a car like that. Do you, does your car do that? Can you just, that must be so nice. It unlocks it. That's pretty neat. But, it, but so don't lose my analogy, okay? I'm, I'm talking old school. Stan still has a car that I got to use the, the key, right? <laughs> Actually, I can unlock it before I get to it now that I think about it. But, but anyway, let's go back a few years before we had that, right? So it's a key. But you have to put the key. You have to put the key. My first car, we'll talk about my first car. It was a 1964. Four, do you remember that car? That, it was a. No, it was before that lousy Datsun. It was a green, ugly Datsun. Before the green, ugly Datsun, there was this gross, yellow Ford, four door. 1964, the shocks were shot in it. It had slick tires, and that wasn't because I went out and bought them. It was because they were worn out. And I'd go around a corner, and the whole car would go kind of like this. Why am I telling the story anyway? Oh, because I needed a key to unlock that terrible car, right? The point is that in order to get into a, that car in that day and vintage especially, and in those days, you had to take your key, unlock the door, but you had to go in, you had to take the key, you had to put it in the ignition, you had to turn the ignition to turn and release the power of the engine, right? You know what I'm saying? No matter what kind of car it was. You could have the best car in the world, but until you turned the key, you had no power. I got power. I got power. Look at this, look at this, look at this amazing vehicle I got. I got power. You don't have power activated until you turn the key. And so the baptism, the, the Pentecost, we're using the term Pentecost this morning and being filled, is an ability, but it, it is a power that is a key. It must be inserted. It must be turned. It must be acted upon. And so Peter, in Acts chapter 2, took the key. The Holy Ghost gave him the key in the first few verses of Acts and he took that key and he turned it and he unlocked the engine of the living kingdom of God that was able to touch and impact his world. Is that not right? That's what took place. And as a result of him taking the ability and releasing that, releasing the engine of the living God, people's lives were touched, right? So you may feel intimidated, you may feel uncomfortable, you may think, well, I'll get scared or I'm just... Uncomfortable. Just take the key and just turn it. Just, just act and as Paul, Peter did, I should say. Peter, he just stood up and he started talking and the Lord began to move. And the Spirit of the Lord began to come upon him and touched his life. Did he get it beforehand? I don't think so. I think it was at that moment as he stepped out, right? And, and lives were affected. And so what's the free, fruit of Pentecost? Well, it affects people's lives. It affects people's life. So are people being positively moved towards Jesus in your life? It's a good question, right? We think about Pentecost, we think about the experience of Pentecost, and we think about some of the signs we have of that in our lives, language and so forth. But, but listen, when Jesus talked about it, he said it was power unleashed. And so are you seeing people moved towards Jesus? Or are you seeing people impacted by your words in one way or another? Not always positive, but you're, you're, you're seeing something. If you're not, or it's minimal, then folks, you need more. You need more. You need more of Him. Because Pentecost opens a gateway. It opens a doorway for more of the Holy Spirit even in illumination and such things as dreams and visions. See, in Acts chapter 2, Peter goes on and he says, this is what Joel spoke about. We heard that back in the synagogue. But now God has come. Jesus died on the cross. He rose again. The Spirit of God has been placed in our lives. And now we've been able to get filled with God, filled with the Pentecost of, of the Lord, and that's available to all of us. He says, I want you to know, that's not all. Joel 2 Joel said to us not only that, but in the gift is also that we get dreams and we get visions. And so he says in Acts 2, he says, in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. 
Wow. Now, I'm not saying that a person that has not received Pentecost cannot get a vision. I didn't say that. Did I say that? No, I didn't say that. But what I am saying is through Pentecost, there is an unleashing. It is a gateway into those areas that they become more fluid, more frequent, more clear, it, more, more, more multiple dimensional in your life. It is part of what the Lord can make available and would make available to you as he did to Peter in Acts chapter 10. So listen, there's so much to say, but I would tell you this. It's just not enough for you and I to say Pentecost is okay and leave it at that. When Jesus spoke about it, and when Peter talked about it, and when we see it in the New Testament, it's not enough to just say intellectually to assent to it and say, I believe. That's not enough. See, I grew up not knowing Jesus Christ as my personal Savior and Lord. I grew up going to catechism. I knew that Jesus died on the cross. I knew he was buried, rose the third day. I knew he was ascended onto heaven. I knew that the Holy Spirit had been released. I, 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 I was taught those things, but I had not experienced those things. There's a difference. There's a difference. Men, so, so intellectual assent is not enough. Saying Pentecost is okay or it's historical is not enough. These truths, this experience can change your life, can unlock your life, can bring you into greater levels of freedom. Jesus said, so thirst for it. We sang that song, All Who Are Thirsty. In John chapter 7, Jesus said again, on the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. So he's talking about being thirsty. Not just an emotion, but a response to him. Do you have this power? Or do you need a fresh empowerment? Are you seeing results? Are, are you seeing influence? The Holy Spirit says, let me come and help you let me touch your life in a fresh way by granting you a Pentecost in your own life. Many are listening, as I said earlier, in your homes. I started my songs by saying that you're listening in your homes today and I can't lay hands on you. Man, I want to lay hands on people in a sense. I want, I want to just see people beside me and I want to pray for them. Mew, I, I want to do that right now, but I can't. But I am comforted today that more than Stan Rukin being there, more than our service leader Dan Jorgensen able to be with you this morning, I want to comfort you and I am encouraged to comfort you and say to you that more than a human being is with you today, the Holy Spirit is in your house with you right now. And he was with Cornelius and Cornelius had Pentecost in his own house with his own family. Saul went out on his patio and deck because lunchtime didn't come when he thought it would, and he received a vision from the Lord. Saul of Tarsus went to a house, and, 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 and he was on his face before the Lord, and the Holy Spirit came and touched him and illuminated him, and he received his height, sight, and I believe got more of the Holy Spirit into his life. These things happen in homes. So in your home right now where you feel secure, where you feel safe today, you can receive more of the Holy Spirit. So I pray for you right now. I pray that in the name of Jesus Christ, you would receive a personal Pentecost right now in the name of Jesus. In the biblical manner, biblical Pentecostal experience, a gift of the Holy Spirit. I don't care what you call it. We get hung up on names, the gift of the Holy Spirit, the baptism. That this stuff that Jesus is talking about in Luke chapter 24 and Acts chapter 1 and Acts chapter 7 and, you know, and Acts chapter 19 and Acts chapter 10 and Acts chapter 11, all through the book of Acts and in, and, and, and in Luke and so forth, and, and that the apostles spoke about throughout the epistles. Listen, this, you, it's for you right now. So, so just... Just, Stan will start getting excited. Let, just, just rest in his presence right now and just receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That is for you right now in the name of Jesus. So I pray for you to receive more.
to receive a refilling, to receive an initial filling. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Just say, yes, Lord. Just say, yes, Lord. Just say, yes, Lord. Just say, yes, Lord. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Just say, yes, Lord. My brother was filled at house. He was filled in his own home. Just fill his own home. You can be right now. Just, just receive more of him right now. No more excuses. No more excuses. Just receive. What a great way to celebrate Pentecost Sunday. Thank God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So bless you. God bless you. Keep seeking more of him in your life. Isn't the Lord good? God bless you. And you have a wonderful, wonderful long weekend. We love you, miss you, and praying for you today. Amen. Take care.